Diabetes mellitus is a chronic lifelong condition that affects our body's ability to use the energy found in diet. It is the third leading cause of death in US after heart disease and cancer. In this video, we are going to talk about diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a clinical condition characterized by increased blood glucose level. This condition is also called hyperglycemia. It occurs due to insufficient or inefficient insulin. That is, insulin is either not produced in sufficient quantity or it is inefficient in its action on the target tissues. As a result, blood glucose levels becomes so elevated that the glucose spills over into the urine. This provides a convenient diagnostic test for the disease. Diabetes is a major cause of blindness, renal failure, amputation, heart attacks and stroke. Symptoms of diabetes include increased urine output, thirst, hunger and fatigue. First, let's grab some basic knowledge about the hormone insulin. Insulin is a polypeptide hormone produced by the beta cells of Isles of Langerhans of pancreas. Human insulin contains 51 amino acids. Arranged in two polypeptide chains A and B. The chain A has 21 amino acids while the chain B has 30 amino acids. Both these chains are held together by two interchain disulfide bridges. These are the disulfide bridges. In addition, there is an interchain disulfide link in chain A between the amino acids 6 and 11. Insulin acts mainly on muscle, liver and adipose tissue cells to promote the synthesis of glycogen, fats and proteins. Insulin lowers blood glucose level by promoting its utilization and storage and by inhibiting its production. This image shows the comparison of normal insulin response and an insulin resistive response. When the digestive system breaks down food to produce glucose, it is absorbed into the bloodstream and the body's glucose levels rises. It can be explained through this flowchart. Glucose is then transferred to the bloodstream as a result of which the glucose levels in the blood rises. As the blood glucose level rises, the pancreas release insulin to help the uptake of glucose by the cells. Pancreas release the hormone insulin which further increases the uptake of glucose by the cells. In a non-diabetic person, normal levels of the hormone insulin are released after a meal to help restore the blood glucose levels to normal as the tissues respond by absorbing glucose, storing it in the form of glycogen. Whereas in an insulin resistant person, the process breaks down the food and the body fails to use the secreted insulin effectively because the cells do not respond to the presence of insulin. As a result, more insulin is required to reduce the blood glucose level causing the pancreas to work harder to meet the demand. Eventually, the pancreas cannot keep up with the demands causing the blood glucose levels to rise. 
We will now look upon the effects of insulin on the important metabolic pathways. The pathways of carbohydrate metabolism are affected by insulin as there is an increase in the glycolysis pathway which means that more and more glucose will be metabolized through glycolysis in muscle and liver. There is a decrease in the gluconeogenesis pathway which means that the glucose synthesis is prevented by suppressing the key enzymes of this pathway. The glycogenesis pathway is increased leading to the conversion of glucose to glycogen as a storage form. The pathway glycogenolysis is decreased that is the glycogen is prevented from breaking down to yield glucose. The lipid metabolic pathways are affected by insulin as there is an increase in the lipogenesis pathway that is the synthesis of triacylglycerides from glucose is increased. There is a decrease in the lipolysis pathway which means that insulin decreases the activity of hormone sensitive lipase and there is a decrease in the ketogenesis pathway that is ketone bodies formation is suppressed which are produced as a result of fatty acid breakdown. Last but not the least the protein metabolism is affected by insulin as the protein synthesis is increased which means that insulin stimulates the entry of amino acids into the cells and the protein degradation is decreased. Now let's move on to the classification of diabetes mellitus. There are two major forms of diabetes mellitus. First one is the insulin dependent type 1 or juvenile onset diabetes mellitus which most often strikes suddenly in childhood. And the second is the non-insulin dependent type 2 or maturity onset diabetes mellitus which usually develops gradually after the age of 40. Let's first discuss about the insulin dependent type 1 diabetes mellitus. Type 1 diabetes mellitus accounts for about 10 to 20 percent of the known cases. This type includes total deficiency of insulin due to the destruction of beta cells of pancreas. Hence, pancreas fails to secrete insulin in response to glucose ingestion. This destruction may be caused by drugs, viruses or autoimmunity. Due to certain genetic variation, the beta cells are recognized as non-cells and they are destroyed by immune-mediated injury. The patients of type 1 diabetes mellitus require insulin therapy. This insulin therapy includes insulin shots. Now we shall talk about the insulin independent type 2 diabetes mellitus. Type 2 diabetes mellitus accounts for 80 to 90 percent of the diabetic population. This type occurs in adults with age above 35 years and is less severe than the insulin dependent type 1 diabetes mellitus. The causative factors of this type include genetic and environmental factors. It occurs more commonly in obese individuals. Obesity leads to decrease in the insulin receptors. The patients of type 2 diabetes mellitus may have either normal or even increased insulin levels. It is suggested that overeating causes increased insulin production but decreased synthesis of insulin receptors. Now we shall move on to the long term effects of diabetes. Diabetes mellitus or hyperglycemia is directly or indirectly associated with several complications. These include atherosclerosis that is the increased blood cholesterol levels, retinopathy that is the damage to the retina of the eye. Nephropathy that is the damage to the kidneys and neuropathy which is damage to the nerves. Now let's talk a little bit about the management of diabetes. 
Diabetes treatment depends on the type and severity of the diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is treated with insulin, exercise and a diabetic diet. A diabetic diet includes low carbohydrate and low fat diet. Carbohydrates should be taken in the form of starches and complex sugars. Type 2 diabetes is first treated with weight reduction, a diabetic diet and exercise. When these measures fail to control the elevated blood sugars, oral medications are used. If oral medications are still insufficient, insulin and other injectable medications are considered. So this was the basic information about diabetes mellitus and its relation with the hormone insulin. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment for queries and suggestions. Thank you.